Peter Lang. I'm a writer, um, about to be a graduate student from Florida Gulf Coast University. And right now you are tuned in and alumni of JT Foundation, poet. Um, right now you're tuning into the Blue Apple Poetry, Ballpoint Blue Apple Poetry Podcast. Hey. You know, hey. Yes. You're logged in, you're tuned in with the right station and the right frequency. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, Pete, way to set the tone, man. What's up, y'all? This is Ballpoint with Blue Apple Poetry Podcast. I'm your host for today. My name is Just John. Shouts out to the whole JT Foundation. Shouts out to my Blue Crew. Shouts out to Peter being a core member, being like the OG of OGs, right? So I got the OG here with me. <laughs> and so <laughs> we're just going to kick it, you know, have cool conversation and, and talk about what's going on in the world and how we can use our platforms to spread awareness or to spread any type of love to vulnerability, to advice, right? So that's that's what we're all here for today. And so, Pete, if you want to start us off, man, just kind of give us a little glimpse or a taste of, of what got you to start writing poetry in the first place. Paint it black, paint us free. Paint us in yellow, blue, and green. Paint us black with our different tones of mahogany. Mahogany and moonlight, bass dripping out our AirPods, earphones, and speakers, hydraulics on our Heelys, angels rapping with preachers, a Southern, Bas a Southern Baptist cipher, angels and preachers, shadows and seekers spitting until the walls come down until the rubble that was once fear now dissolves into love. Paint us without white folk, because that's okay. Paint us in harmony, paint us in blackness, paint us in blackness that is so inclusive that it feels you know, kind of exclusive, but damn it, everyone has a seat at the table. Paint the children spilling their truths to demolish what we call adult, adult politics and yes, paint Jesus black because his hair is matted and it's quite beautiful. His consciousness is for all and paint him black because it's the truth and it's okay. I am is in black. I am is that I am painted beyond black, painted beyond beautiful with lace front and fro and crow and Jimmy reading books about Mansa Musa in first grade so that he knows that blacks were kings before they were slaves paint the sounds of black from the Indies, from the West Indies to the Panama, to Cuba, paint teardrops falling out from tattoos of men who commune in tears, writing love letters with their left hands, paint in the dark, paint something golden between the fractures and call it Kasugi, paint it black, Paint it golden, then call it black. Paint us free. Paint us healed. Paint us an alchemist. Paint us a healer. Paint us Zulu. Paint us black and Creole and Jamaican. Mansa Musa. Paint us black. Cleopatra. Paint and beyond. Paint us beyond absence. Paint us beyond the days of absence where the whites could not do anything without us. Paint us beyond. Only when we can paint ourselves in that day, we can paint ourselves and only us, we can only paint our insides. You cannot touch that as we have not touched yours. Paint us bad and bougie. Paint us true. Paint it black and transcendent and beautiful. Paint us misfit and mystic. And let us resemble the gods. Paint us and paint us all. Paint us black. Paint it black. Fire. Fire, Pete. I love the line that you said, we were kings before we were slaves. That was so fire, man. Fire. Appreciate you. So what got me starting writing poetry in the first place? Ah, this is lit. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think I've said this to anyone yet, but I actually first started writing poetry because of Wale. <laughs> Yo, Yo that's awesome. Yo, same. <laughs> I was in middle school. Like, I, I'd written poetry before. All of my poetry pre-Blue Apple was all, like, lovey-dovey stuff. I remember I wrote a poem when I was, like, a real little one. I was, like, gee, I was probably probably too young to even know I was writing a poem. But I wrote, like, a 
roses are red, violets are blue. Mm-hmm. But like after that type of poem, when I like started like writing in my iPod notes all the time was um I was in middle school, I listened to more about nothing from Wale. The answer. I- the problem. The problem. Yo, oh my God, Pete, do you have the similar story? That's, I'm sorry, I'm going to let you continue, but I'm like so hyped because that is literally my inspiration. Literally. Girl, writing so poetry. Oh, that's so crazy. So hard. Paint them all. I don't like this rap. Ain't really sick. Bro, I'm saying though, so... That whole mixtape, something about the vibe at that specific time just made me like, I'm about to write poetry. Mm. And it just made me feel like when I was writing poetry to girls and stuff, like I felt like I was like Wale or whatever. I, f- I don't know, I thought I was smooth, you know? So like that started with the poetry um, in terms of like me actually writing stuff. After that, I went to Northeast and I met Darius Daughtry at um at Northeast because he was a teacher there and he had a poetry club and a drama club and I remember my mom introduced me to him and he, my mom he was like I don't know I guess my mom was saying that I rapped or whatever to him and he was like okay spit song <laughs> I was like first I think it was trash I don't know <laughs> but after that I started writing in that club and then kind of like uh what's the word for it just like miraculous miraculously and like um serendipitously like the blue apple poetry foundation sort of started while i was in high school with d doing the poetry club there and then he started working the nine and i i like our schools got connected into the blue apple and then from there that just kept on going but i was always putting a lot of time and energy to the poetry club and the drama club um and really, I think poetry was just a way for me to express myself because I did not know. I'm still learning how to express myself. Mm. Like, I did not know. When you think of it as layers, let's say at the bottom of this, like, um, this water bottle, right? Let's say, like, the real most authentic, I don't know if you can see, the most authentic version of me is at the bottom of this water bottle. Right. Or, like, in order to get there, I have to, like, go through the layers of the water i gotta sip i gotta sip i gotta pour and every time i would write i felt something real deep at the bottom of myself but i was every time i wrote it was like me trying to express something that was at the bottom of this water bottle you know what i mean but like and every time i wrote it would take a little bit more water off the top Mm. and i think um yeah, I think I, and then I think, I think I wrote a lot and I would perform a lot. And I think for me, the um, balance between, at least specifically for spoken word, because it can tend to become more performative, is um, to balance out what you're writing for your, like, for yourself, but like what you're just writing to write, mm-hmm. you know, versus thinking that you have to write a poem or you have to even saying that you have to do anything like you have to write something so you go perform like I think that was the balance for me and that's the balance that I'm I think the word is equal I'm equalizing right now mm-hmm. it's like writing for myself and um not feeling pressure excuse me to um be performative because yeah. I feel like the performative aspect of poetry at times or spoken word poetry can take away from all of the um the writing the actual message actual writing and the gaining that you get because like i think from i'm not i can't speak for all of us but i think a lot of us do write because we have that thing at the bottom of us you know Mm -hmm. and we're writing to get to that in a sense or writing because that is coming Mm -hmm. up it's Mm -hmm. not just to go down but sometimes that it's like spirit and energy that thing that drives us is also rising within us and it's coming to the top and then we write that's inspiration Mm -hmm. that's when something is coming from the bottom and it's going to the top like like you think of like a volcano like like that's inspiration and sometimes you write to like 
get right with yourself. So, and that's diving deep. Going down, yeah. I think that those two are like the balance of, I guess, any creative process and anything that is also um, also healing and a contemplative practice amongst like just creativity. But all of that is coming from within yourself. So it makes you shed layers and it makes you get to the deeper part of yourself as well as like express the deeper parts of yourself. So yeah, that's, that's been my experience with it. And that's the best way I could um, encapsulate that or um, give the best picture for that. Yeah, no, that's a beautifully put picture. That's beautifully encapsulated in, in an analogy, right? And, and something we could tangibly, visibly see uh, with the water bottle, that's a perfect example. Um, Cause yeah, I feel that fire and fuel from myself sometimes from inside too. And then sometimes I tap in to then touch, you know, that inspiration again. And so it, like, I like to think of it as like a muscle. You got to exercise this muscle in order to continue to make that junk strong. And um, like, I love what you talked about, man. You got so much, so much nuggets in there. Like I, I have a similar story as you actually starting writing period like even before jtf like i used to write poems like for girls or for like my vulnerability or if i had emotions i had to get off my chest and wale at the time was like the most poetic voice i had ever heard because it was like i was so into music and i was into like j cole lupe fiasco stuff like that but then when i heard wale it was like yo this dude so smooth with it and he on a beat and like it makes sense like he he don't gotta be just rapping all the time like he's actually spitting poetry and my first song i heard was the problem which was on the more about nothing tape mind you that whole tape slaps like that's like platinum double platinum for me like one of my top five like of all time mixtapes you feel me um with seinfeld on it just like really set the bar for me but um like from there, I was like, man, like I, I remember vividly the day of, I was in middle school, we had benchmark assessment tests. And if you, anybody from Broward or Florida know about benchmarks, you know, if, if you pass a certain point, you didn't have to, you can exempt the test, you feel me? But you had to sit in class and just sit for like three hours. So I'm like, man, what am I gonna do? I'm listening to my iPod Nano, my iPod Shuffle, whatever it was. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> go back, go back. <laughs> So back and I'm like, man, let me just try something. So I listened to um, Wale's The Problem and I was writing, a, my first poem ever was called The Answer. Literally like was like a playoff of that song. So it's crazy that you brought that up because that was like one of my first poems. That's crazy. Like <laughs> the nostalgia for me, just hearing that just makes me want to go crazy because I can remember <laughs> we said, <laughs> we said oh, I nano. <laughs> Yo, for real, man, for real, for real. This is before the I, I <laughs> oh, no. before that, like for real. It's crazy. Kids are gonna look back like at this and be like, I caught nano. Right. That's I'm like, gonna, bro, you, you know to the them. feeling like when you used to get when you were younger and, and somebody that was our age would be like, man, I'm getting old. And you'd be like, bro, you're 20, bro. Like, you're not even old. Now I feel it. Like, 23, yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm getting old, bro. Like, what's going on? It's just got me nostalgic vibes, man. So flash forward, you know, you 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 got a part of Blue Apple and you not only, like, took it by the horns, but you became a part of CORE, right? Being one of the illest of the illest poets working alongside Epiphany. Zaharian Williams, Savannah, you know, Doug, so many talented, talented artists. So what was that like for you, that experience of being a core member and, and being amongst the top of the top cream of the crop poets? Cream of the cream. Um, it's funny because I, I don't necessarily like think of that like that in my head, but I definitely do agree everyone I was around amazing writers and poets and human beings. Um, I think it was just a dope learning experience and a great experience in general. Um, like the opportunities that we got through doing that. I was like, I was, I've been looking at my Blue Apple Beginnings poetry book right. and I was just like, like I still have the art piece. Like I have my art piece in my room. Like it's hanging up right here. Yeah, I got the book right there. Like it's looking back at it now it's like whoa like that was a really dope experience and i was that was um a great time for like all of us 
who were like circulating around each other at that time. Um, I think the best part for me was just learning from the other, other poets. I feel like I always kind of observe the people around me and I try to take in as much as I can. And it's also funny because even though I do do that, even though that's something that I do, I always notice as like when I look back, there's even more that I get from it. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like you watch, you read a book and you got a lot from the book then, but when you reread it, you're like, damn, you see all these things you didn't see before. And that's kind of the experience that I feel like I'm having right now when like doing things like this. And um, really that was just a, the best way to describe it would be like an amazing foundation and um, trampoline board. It was like a, it was like a foundation that was building um, critical analysis and thought and expression and connections and networks and people for me. Mm -hmm. But then and but also it built like a different type of um, structure for me. But it's also something I can bounce off of. Like it was like it's a foundation that. It's like a trampoline board. Like I can stand on it. I can walk on it. And if I want to jump and I want to go higher, I can boom. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's exactly what it was for me. And I'm thankful. My boy be speaking in metaphors. I love it. It's like a trampoline. That's fire. Not for sure. And and I and I really um I want to have to shout out Autumn and and Marnino, some other dope poets that grew up in my in my home my home school at Miramar. And and so. Looking back at it, like you alongside the names that I called out were some poets that I looked up to because poetry was new for me. Like, I mean, even though I had been writing, like I had never performed on stage. I had never even really showed these poems to people. I just had collections on collections of notes and ideas in my in my phone. And when I finally like heard some of y'all at the PLC, like I remember your poem was about your little sister and how she was like the like light in your eyes or like you seen the light in her eyes, right? And like, to me, like I resonated with it so well cause I had a younger sister too, who, who was looking up to me. And so it was like, just hearing some of these voices, hearing some of these experiences, it made me look back and just be like refreshed and, and proud to be like friends with some of y'all. And, and to this day, like I'm, I can still kick it with Peter. I can still kick it with Savannah, Marnino, Epiphany, Autumn, like whoever it may be. It's like, we built connections that could last further than just like, high school or further than just like a program or you know an event even and so that's that's really what this is about blue apple is um finding ways to just bridge people together and figure out what we can do next and so even outside of blue apple right even outside of even outside of um, i think I do. you're doing work from the wave i think you had a you had a showcase called the um waves and and that was awesome. So like, what are you doing? What's some what's some maybe some things you're trying to tackle, without being too specific on on your situations? What are some ideas artistically that you're trying to tackle? What are some ideas. Um. So right now, artistically, I could say that I'm. Here, I'm gonna switch it from artistically and I'm gonna go to socially. So like, so I feel like there's a lot going on right now. There is a lot going on right now. And in terms of my creativity and what, um, what drives me in that specific manner, I'm educating, I'm cur I'll tell you what I'm currently doing. So I'm currently educating myself on my history Mm. And my um, when I say my history, I'm talking all the way to like my ancestors, but also my history of being like a black human being. Like, what does that mean in the scape and of like the reality that we live in? And so um, I'm educating myself, and in alignment with that, I'm seeing and learning how to integrate what. I'm educating myself on and how I can imbue that into what I create. So let's say like, um, cause one of the things I view as something incredibly important for like 
our global and let's just say our country our like national growth is education and if i can educate people through the things that i love doing then i feel like i'll be not just living an impactful life a fulfilling life for myself but also an impactful life by creating let's say uh let's say a script let's say i wrote a script that and I, I posted this recently so like a script on like inspired by the haitian revolution so if i'm giving giving voice to the voiceless in a sense into things that people don't know about that can change everything and i feel like through what i love doing like whether that be writing um making music or even like putting on events then then i feel like i'm simultaneously doing what fulfills me but also having an impact so like that's what i'm working on right now and really the, the biggest thing like i said is like learning my history i feel like that's the most important thing for me right now and for all of us in terms of like the social scape that we're in like how can we move forward we can't move forward unless we know where we've been. So, like, um, I know that's important for me because I can't speak on any and repeat the same mistakes that my past selves did if I don't read up on myself because myself is also what my past has been. In a sense. I might have got a little convoluted at the end, but really what I'm saying is history is important, and that's what I'm working on, and that's going to be in – continuously going to be a part of because as I learn something new about my history I learn something new about myself yeah. and the more I know about myself the more I can give in my writing in my poetry in my like music in like in my film whatever I'm doing so yeah that's that's the most I can give right now is like Thanks. um and just seeing how I can be of service to like my like personal community right now like what can I do to keep like my family straight during this like these times and but then also like what figuring out what I want to pour into mm. that specific stage I'm at right now is like I know that Blue Apple if there's certain things I could pour into in, in terms of this community this is one of those cups that I'll know that I have I'll have a set and I'll know like okay I pour into Blue Apple okay I pour into my family and I pour into myself and right. whatever else that like leads into. But it's important to know what these things are so that I can, you know, like I have like a foundation and I'm moving with purpose. Yeah, so that's, you're what, that's where I'm at right now. So you're just not expending all your energy amongst 50 different cups that you may want to fill up, but you can't at this moment, right? Like you got to <laughs> You got to kind of focus on like what you got in the moment. Um, <laughs> So we're having a little bit of trouble right now. I think like it's kind of breaking up because one of our Wi-Fi or I'm not sure, but as long as you good, can you hear me clear? Now I can. It was messing up for a second, but it got better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same on my end. I was hearing you. So we'll just kind of fight through it. We'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, man, I love what you said because I, I find myself sometimes wanting to do so much and and wanting to be a part of anything somebody pitches as an idea not because i'm trying to blow or get famous but more so it's like i want to tap in i want to take these times to if i could change the life of one person by something i say or my words and my actions then i want to do so but also it's, it's knowing that like you got to have a balance like you said in the beginning like you got to find time for yourself you got time to you know like figure out more about yourself because you can't be pouring into other people's cups without filling up your own. And so one good way to, to know about your own cup is to learn your history, learn your origins, learn where you're from. And so I'm really glad that you're doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because as we, as we more grow to become these social activists, to become these people that are, are actually like speaking out to the world, we got to have our own selves filled up. Right. And so I love that, bro. I love, I love what you're doing, man. I love, and I hope that you get to a place where you're not able to share like this experience that you're having with yourself to others. Cause some people need to hear that. Some people need to be a part of that. They need to find out how, how they can do that in the first place, you know, and that, and that 
that helps you find your purpose. And um, I think this poetry has, has definitely been like something that became a purpose of mine without me even knowing, without it just, it, it almost happened naturally. You know what I'm saying? Just by tapping into it. And so, um, yes, yeah, that's a great piece of advice, man. That's great. Even for myself, I need to recognize that sometimes and not just say yes to everything all the time or not just always try to pour in where I can. Sometimes I got to sit back and reflect, figure out how I'm, where I'm at and then, you know what I'm saying, move on. And so it's just, it's having that balance. I love what you said, that balance is important. But yeah, man, for sure. Well, I'm, I'm, by the way, I learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, like you, I've learned just like to tap back into that is like the way we learn about balance is by being imbalanced. Mm. And when you know you are balanced, like what happens when you're out of balance? You fall. <laughs> and when you, but you get back up because you got that purpose and spirit in you. You never stop. Like that's the thing that, you know, you never stop trying. So like, whoever is listening to this if you feel like oh like i'm off balance i don't know it's okay like the way you find balance it's not a place it's a constant state of being so like the way you find balance is by noticing where you're imbalanced you're like oh i'm a little off on my left okay all right let me push a little bit back to the right okay oh i'm almost feeling the right you know just like a skateboard like a bicycle like everything else and we um but once and once we learn how to ride then we'll know forever you feel me so like it's, I think it's just like a grand process that we're all going through right now. And it's, um, I don't know, it's, 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 it's funny now because like since, I've, since I have fallen before and I know what it feels like to fall, like now it's like, ah, uh, it's okay. Like I know how to be more gentle with myself. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like not the end of the world um, in that sense. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, I get you. It's- it's it's almost like relieving because you you find the beauty in it. You find the success story from that failure or from that fall. It's like it's almost like the first time you scrape your knee off a bike, you're like, oh my god, oh no, I scraped my knee. Like I'm never gonna go on this bike again. But then when you get back on it the second or third time and you wib- wiggle a little bit, you're like, okay, I I felt this feeling before, so I know how to move in this space, right? And so. That's beautiful, man. That's that's awesome. That's awesome to tell these students that are listening, these high school students, these, you know, these collegiate artists, anybody who's listening right now, like finding that, you know, that beauty and in, in, in taking that step backwards. So that's dope, man. I appreciate that that information. For sure, man. Pivoting towards um, you know, we've been talking about what's going on and, and some of the police brutality and what we can do. As, as a community. And we've been talking about um, how these artists now more than ever have like almost the biggest responsibility, you know, where not only during like the pandemic and being quarantined, we had to like learn how to entertain, you know, like people were looking at artists for entertainment, whether that's music, poetry, like videos, funny videos, like skits. Um, people were looking for these entertainers and now more than ever, now that we have this platform as artists, um, they're now looking to, for people to be voices for the ones that are voiceless or for the ones that may not know how to speak up on it. And so you as an artist, how do you feel your pen or how do you feel your mind is like a tool in this whole like universe of, of, of tool, like a big old tool, but I like to think of it as our pen is just one of the assets that we can contribute to to bring the world together and so how do you feel about your writing or or even your your voice right you're being a leader um how do you feel that can shape what's going on or how you feel that can be something beneficial for these students listening uh okay so my answer to that is i think it's beneficial like for us to use our voices I think for me, I took it for granted, maybe. I didn't know mm-hmm. how, um, I think I didn't have worth in my own voice. Like I didn't see how worthy my voice was in a sense. So like I kind of like shot away from like, maybe like exposing my voice and some of my thoughts. Um, I think to that point, 
I think it's important to have a better perspective on leaders and what, like we are all leaders, leaders in a sense. And we literally are all leaders. And so I think one of my perspectives that I shifted was that like, you know, that like first and foremost, I'm a part of the group. I'm not external of it. And so like, I think um, I just started letting myself like speak out when I saw things like, example, like tweeting some things. Cause some, I don't like really tweeting a lot. I don't, I don't like doing that. But some of the things that like, I felt like I should let my voice be heard. Cause I feel like saying these things is like, I feel like telling Biden like, the person who may be running for president, like, um, yo, like, I need more than a knee. I need better education and education reform. Da da da. Like, that just throwing that out there. Um, and what I'm tying this to is almost like, at least for me, what my feelings were were like, like, I, I definitely consider myself to be a leader, but for some reason, I felt like it was a little bit too, um, what's the word? Like, like it was like I was being cocky to think of myself as a leader or something like that. Like I didn't have like the self-worth and understanding of what that means that like, oh, like to understand like, yes, I am a leader mm. and that's not like a good or bad thing. That's just like what it is. Um, and so I think what I've come to right now is that if I'm going to speak, then I want my voice to be, um, I want it to be like concise and potent like, like I, and I, and I now understand a little bit more how like sharing a poem or like a piece that I created or this and that can be powerful in its own right, in its own way, right. um, in the spaces that I'm um, connected to. And so like the community forum that Blue Apple did last time, like that's something specifically, like I said, there's like cups I want to pour into. That is a specific bowl that I know I want to pour into because mm -hmm. I can imagine how I felt in high school where I wish I had like, now I want to call them mentors, just like people who are older than me to listen to me. Yeah, facts. And I felt like those students, when I heard them speaking, I was like, dang, like, what do you need? And I want to help provide that and support that. And so like, that's something specifically I feel like I can pour into. And I feel like that's also me being a leader in a sense. Right. Um, for sure. For sure. A leader. I loved the fact that you reiterated at that forum, like, Hey, listen, I just want to, I, I feel this on my heart and I just got to ask this question. Like, what do y'all need? I, I feel like that was very important. And cause it, even if they say nothing, right? Like at the end of the day, you, you provided somebody the chance to be able to speak up. Right. Um, and I like to think of that as myself. Like when I was younger in high school, I didn't really have that. You know what I mean? Like I had a, a messed up situation with playing ball with my coach and some of the things that my coach used to say or do or, or treat us made me want to speak up and say something. But I didn't have anybody to. You know what I mean? And so it kind of gives these students now growing the, the space now to almost like feel validated in why they feel certain ways. You know what I mean? Whether it be, uh, you know, right or wrong, or even if we give them advice, or maybe sometimes we can't really walk them through that situation, but we're able to listen and, and grasp that from them. So that's dope, man. I, I, I applaud you for being able to do that. And, um, and you're, you're a significant leader of ours, man. We need you around as much as possible, as much as you can be, you know, a part of, you know, these students need to hear a voice like yours or a voice like Epiphany, a voice like whoever else may be doing the work, like actually doing the work. That's why I feel like artists now are so impactful because we've been doing the work of speaking up about these things. Now it's just time, like people are actually listening to what's going on. So now we can use that as a way to tap in to our people. Um, so yeah, man, do you have any like poems maybe you want to share or anything that you've you've been writing, you've been working or or previously that you wanna you wanna share with us? All right. All right, so this image, can you see it? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm gonna break down this image real quick. I could just share my screen too. So let me just share my screen. Let me just share my screen. 
just do that. Because um, I want to give detail, asking about some things that I've been up to. This is one of those things. And so I'm gonna, I want to share this with y'all and show you kind of my mind and my process. For sure. Let me know if you have any trouble screen sharing. Um, it says that I can't, but I guess we'll just use the image. Um, yeah, it says that I can't. Give me one second. Let me see if I can try to give you access. Yes, yeah, if you're the host, you can probably. Yeah, I'm not able to. Yo, you know what's crazy? Just now when you told me about that, the poem that you said, um, you know, that you remembered that you liked for me, like, I appreciate that, bro. I never, like, I never knew for that poem. Because I sometimes what I remember people, like, speaking to me about most was the Black Boy Missing piece. Mm -hmm. that, that piece for my sister, I haven't, I haven't read that piece in a long time. Let me see if I have that real quick. Bro, you know what's beautiful about that is I literally had a piece that I written for LTAB that I wrote just for LTAB and I like never performed it again. And I like recently tapped back into it and like the, the relevance of like what was going on then because I wrote it during like Trayvon Martin's passing. And then like to, to see even to, to today, like it still be relevant. I was like, man, that's crazy. Like I wrote this poem almost like more than five years ago. You know what I mean? And so we, we as artists tend to sometimes forget how important these moments were in our lives that we've shared. So I'm not able to let you screen share. I'm not sure how it works, but. um, Yeah, I got you. And that's 100 percent correct. I, mean, I feel the same. Oh, shoot. You know what? Oh, Here. I got you. I, I just fixed it. Um, Are you able to screen share now? Yeah. Yes, I am. Hey, it's lit. Hey. You see you're not big too? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now can you see the boxes that I'm making? Now I can see the boxes. Okay, perfect. So this box, these are <clears throat> three men who are very important in the Haitian Revolution. Um, the first one to the far left or the right, he's holding it like a machete up. That's Dutty Bookman. You got Toussaint in the middle and Dessaline. Dessalines. And um there were three men who were a part of the Haitian Revolution, all in different points in time, um, and all had different roles. And so I was reading this book from one of the classes I was in, and from my own like learning of myself. And I don't know, I ended up making this piece because I felt like those voices were so important, and that you know often like I never heard of those voices not once while growing up in elementary school, middle school, or high school. But like, this has literally like changed my own view of myself and my people um, of Haiti and like myself. So I just wanted to show this kind of piece for people who can watch this later. Right. And and, and um, I'll give y'all a little sneak peek of some, if this works, let's see. Wow, man. That's awesome. Boom. Okay. Lit, lit. Can you see a script now? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Voices of the Revolution, May 20th, 2020. A young boy is asleep in his bed. Imagine his room as you may, but he has a blue carpet, and there's a nightlight that never burns, but tonight it ignites. A narration. Spirit led us here. Many players all had a role in the revolution. Play your part, play your part, play your part. A nameless spirit. Commander! General, general, a spirit dressed in revolution garment runs to the ground towards the corner of the room by the foot of the boy's bed. The spirit of Toussaint manifests. The boy has been roused and is watching with wide eyes with covers over his mouth. Close your eyes, boy, an unknown spirit says. The boy is startled, closed his eyes and hit his head, swiveled trying to find the origin of the voice. For a moment, he continued to peek but then the boy saw that the translucent 
image of Toussaint could be seen with more clarity when his eyes were closed. And not just Toussaint, but his surroundings became that of some island. The nameless spirit continues to speak and rouse Toussaint. Toussaint calms him, waves him to silence. Shh. Listen, if I could go back, I may have shared a few more words amongst my brothers. I would have shared the happenings within the kingdom of my mind. I did not want to leave my dream. I could see the vision so clear. But we could not, Dissaline says, silence. Yet we are the very ones within the vision and within this dream. Above voices of the people can be heard singing like a choir. Like the northern lights whisking in the sky, you can see the spirit of the people in reds, blues, orange, yellow, and green all mixing. A spirit rolls from the ceiling to the ground. The spirit rolls into a young boy grabbing at Toussaint. The spirit boy, we too have minds than another. Desires and dreams, two spirit boys say, all three together. We thank you for what you have done, but we had much to share and give, and we did. The three boys show their arms and legs that have been burned and scarred. The young boy in bed clo clenches his arm at the sight of theirs. Toussaint lets out a sigh. <sighs> he puts a hand on their shoulders and embraces them. Tears fall from Toussaint's eyes. The boys filter back to spirits. The hues rise into the sky. As they rise, the choir sings again. Silence fills the room. The young boy has tears on his face, in his eyes. The choir sings and the voices shout out, thank you. Yes, we had voices. Yes, we had dreams. We had minds too. They sing. We are whole. Dessalines looks at Toussaint. You see? Toussaint, I see. Silence. Mm. My boy, okay. Script writing, playwriting, all that. Boy, you multifaceted in so many different ways. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So that goes and plays the part of you talking about you tapping back into your, you know, your roots and where you came from and where you started, and and your ancestors and your your great grandparents and all of those those things, right? Hundred percent. Um, yeah, that's like an image of. I guess what I felt like, I don't know, but I thought it would be cool if like the vision of your ancestors came to you in the night and you just saw the story unfolding and they were just like giving blessings to you. So um, I just wondered how many other like boys and girls there were like me who maybe didn't have that connection when they were younger and maybe seeing that visual would give them a new sense of power and history instead of just learning about like slavery when they first going to school, you know? So, all right, man, that's fire. It's fire, man. I commend you for that. I look forward to seeing the projects that you got that you're coming out with. The street, the secrets you don't want to yet share with us, but we thank you and appreciate for you even to be able to show us a little snippet of what you've been working on, man. And I'm I'm excited, bro, and I'm I'm proud to have you a part of this this podcast and to talk with you to catch up and, and whatever you need, man. Whenever you need me to lend out a hand or help you with some sort of uh, artistic, creative thing, bro. I'm, I'm here. So just let me know. Here, brother. You here? Let me know. Yeah, man. I, you showing the work, man. You showing what you've been doing, and and I appreciate you even taking the time out to to talk with us and be a part. And I look forward to what you got coming, what you got next, and and how you can be a part of this this movement. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Thank you. I'm I'm just excited to get my bearings and like pour into what I want, like to like actually start seeing like, um, not see fruit, but like I'm ready to, I'm, I'm excited to start pouring. So I'm excited to be at the next community forum. Mm -hmm. And you know, like we can plan out some like voice boxes ahead of time. Then I'm excited to be a part of those as well. Um, so yeah, just like schedules and dates, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to pour into the things I'm ready to pour into. So, for sure, Please, brother. We're going to have a definite conversation uh, later on after this, man. But this is Ballpoint 
with Blue Apple Poetry Podcast. We have Peter Lang in the building. Snapping. You feel me? To all all the, the, go ahead. I was going to say to all the writers, writing to the right with God, to the right with themselves. Thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for the space to speak. Thank you for listening. Thank you for, um, you know, taking in some of um, my creations today and just like us connecting and communicating. I uh, appreciate you. It means a lot to us, man. Thank you. Much love, y'all. Peace. All right.